And of course, in different countries, um, you, you need government subsidies still to go through this period. By 2025, solar power will survive without subsidies, will be clean, will be safe, and will be low cost. So three factors will make it sustainable, and we're confident in that. From another perspective, we talked about the government's, the Chinese government's efforts in in carbon emission uh, reduction. I can see that over the few, last few years, the governments have been taking a more proactive role, role than the years before. They used to talk about per GDP unit emission. Now they are talking about an overall peak. Um, Oleg was talking about an absolute number earlier. I think China will come up with one in the future. Uh, now the central government is setting down targets for local governments. But once the target is set and, 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 and divided uh, among the local region, uh, regions, how do we manage them? Um, when we talked about uh, carbon trading earlier, uh, that's a very good tool, that's a good re re solution. Uh, the big polluters will have to bear more costs, so they have an incentive to reduce emissions and save energy, but there's a problem. In the last two or three decades, we have seen high energy consumption, high emission businesses and power generators. They have been established. But if we're going to reduce carbon emissions, these businesses will come under a lot of pressure. They will lose money, to put it simply. So what to do is the question. Can these businesses just be allowed to go bust? Uh, that, that's an issue we have to tackle. So we're heading into one of the most critical years it's been described as in terms of uh, these sorts of issues and Paris, the Paris meeting at the, end of, at the end of the year. Just a quick yes or no. Do you think we'll meet the targets uh, at the December deadline? I'll start with you. At this moment, no chance. I mean, real agreement. I mean, you can, you can sign a protocol, but which will not produce a result make sure that we will not increase temperature, you know, global temperature over 2% by 2050. At this, at, at this level of material presented, we can't see it will happen. At this moment, if you're talking about a two degrees by the end of the century, no, and we're not going to get there. And uh, uh, we are pretty much on the track towards 3.5 around mm -hmm. ish, but, but it's better than four. In the past, we thought we were sort of going to be on a four degree uh, temperature increase there. So that's a little bit of progress, but uh, far from the two degrees there yet. Uh, but the way I look at Paris, I don't think it's the final point. Uh, rather, I see that as a beginning. If we get an agreement that already says 30, 40 percent with a mechanism to continue to improve, we probably have the best agreement that we've ever seen in the world. And then we obviously have to deliver on that. Now, what it requires is a net zero target well before the end of the decade. It requires a commitment to a price on carbon. You don't treasure what you don't measure. It requires us to agree on financing mechanisms. Lots of perfect subsidies still in the world that work against us. And finally, it requires business to step and do its own part. And Mr. Gao Jifang? I think uh, at Paris is not going to achieve or meet all the expectations of, of ours. But I think the Paris conference is going to be a milestone in climate change control. Uh, 